welcome back friends welcome to another video tutorial from Shomu's biology and in this video lecture I'm going to talk about gastrulation remember in the last lecture we talked about blastulation and that was a whiteboard video and this one is a little modified smart board video which is combination of a whiteboard and some animation stuff so this is an experiment video I'm going to produce it for the first time let's check what happens but we want to talk about the process known as gastrulation and I told you during the last uh, video, last lecture of blastulation that the, the development uh, works always for start from a zygote and then zygote cells start dividing forming a mass of cells which contains at least 8 cells known as morula. Then those cells in the morula they start arranging in the periphery making a small pore inside known as blastula state and the cells surrounding that pore is known as blastomia and inside that pore is known as blastocele and blastocele is a fluid filled cavity that is present there okay now after blastula is formed the most important job is the gastrulation and gastrulation is the only step where a cell ultimately is predicting for its fate that what kind of tissues will be produced and we know our body have different linings and different layers like the layers that we look outside which is skin neurons and stuff like that then we have the skin inside most that is the epidermal epithelial lining of intest intestines uh, of respiratory system those things and then we have some middle connective tissues like the blood circulation system as well as the muscular system so all these different linings of tissue they are produced from three separate layers known as the germ layers during the development and embryogenesis and those three separate layers from each of those separate layers different types of tissues are generated so in the gastrulation the ultimate job is the extensive movement of the cell so let's look at here this is nothing but an extensive movement of cell uh, from one side of the blastula from one side of the blastoderm start folding and going inside and ultimately making three layer of embryo and once you have three layer of embryo they will also form a specific hole inside known as the primitive gut or coelom and coelom is the place where we all have the organism uh, or the all the all the organ uh, of our body what we can say organ systems of our body uh, to be present there so the journey from a morula which is a hollow ball of cells small uh, rigid then blastula which is a which is a hollow sphere of uh, of cells and then finally from there to three layered hollow ball of cell known as gastrula so in the gastrula at the end uh, we form three separate layers and it starts with blastula that means a layer of the cells outside and a blastocele inside now remember one thing the blastocele that is present inside is not becoming the primitive gut it's it's becoming very constricted and ultimately making either uh, mouth or the anus depending upon different types of process in gastrulation right so let's look at here the three separate layers of gastrula and what are the tissues produced from three layer of the gastrula the first outermost layer is known as the ectoderm and ectoderm as you see the outermost layer makes epidermis of the skin epithelial lining of the mouth and rectum sense receptors and cornea nervous system tooth enamel adrenal media and all these different adrenal medulla and all these different types of structures the second type or mesoderm this is the layer between ectoderm and the innermost endoderm so mesoderm makes notochord notochord is a very important structure to finally form a central nervous system inside our body it also produces skeletal muscle another muscular system it also helps in the muscular layer of stomach intestine and also helps in making excretory system and circulatory and lymphatic system the third or innermost layer is the endoderm while endoderm is producing the epithelial lining of digestive tract epithelial lining of respiratory tract liver pancreas thymus uh, these are the important organs so now you see uh, with each of these organ different layers all these different cells of the body are produced all the different organs of the body are produced now we we'll look at the process of this gastrulation I told you there are two process one is the intensive movement of the cell that mostly involved in the process of cell folding or movement of one cell to other uh, one, one type of tissue to another lining of tissue this kind of movements you'll always see during gastrulation and we have such five or six different types of cell movement going from a cell 
folding or as well the sliding of the cell splitting of the cell and we have different names for all this type of movements so before going into the detailed explanation of a gastrulation which is best understood in sea urchin as well as in frog we'll first talk about the all the different types of cell migration and cell movement that we can see in extensive different types of gastrulation in different organisms so let's look at it the first type that we're looking here is uh, this invagination invagination is a very common type of uh, cell folding where you can see this is the blastula normally i think all you can know that the cells in the surrounding and the blastocele in the middle now from this opposite side of the embryo because you know embryo contains two separate part animal pole and vegetal pole we know the cleavage always begins from animal pole but the cell folding always starts from the vegetal pole pole where uh, the egg yolk is present so from where the the in this is in this case clearly visible that the structure is kind of folding and going inside this occurs mostly in case of sea urchin and this particular structure as it's folding inside is going to form the endoderm that is how the endodermal structure is generally formed then the second type we see is known as involution the first one was known as folding or invagination the second one was involution is a little different where you can see that this is the outermost lining of the cell in blue color and it start folding back which is a red color so red color is a type of tissue that is folding and sliding on top of the blue colored membrane and the blue colored tissue is the ectodermal tissue but the ectodermal tissue start differentiating dividing and sliding on top of this ectodermal layer inside and those tissue known in red here is going to form mesodermal layer so they form mesoderm and the example of how they form mesoderm in this way of involution is in case of amphibian or in case of frog we will see the example of how they form this mesodermal layer with the process called involution during frog gastrulation and the third type which is also very very important is known as the epiboly now the epiboly is when the ectodermal layer known in blue is sliding outside of the endodermal layer that is in in case of amphibians sea urchins so in this case this layer is mostly going to form the ectoderm of that organism okay so what's the difference between involution and epiboly if you look at the pictures clearly you can see the arrow that is the direction of movement of the cell for involution ectodermal layer start differentiating and mesoderm start going inside while in case of epiboly ectodermal layer are going outside using mesodermal layer inside that is the difference apart from this two we also have another process called ingression and ingression is a process where individual cells start migrating from one pole to the other pole and the example that we see in case of mostly insect embryogenesis in case of drosophila embryogenesis where they start to form a lot of single cells which are migrating through the place that's what they start migrating from one pole to the other and then the fifth one known as delamination delamination is nothing but splitting of a cell into the other and this thing is very much uh, visible in case of birds because in bird ga gastrulation process is a little bit different from the frog and human gastrulation process because in this case they don't have much room for the folding because you know in case of birds uh, in in during the blastulation uh, chapter blastulation lecture i told you that the division is not complete the division is little and the, because of the dense yolk that is present in the vegetal pole so only animal pole is divided so to form three separate layers it becomes really difficult uh, to to separate them so the best way to do that is simply splitting the cells from one of the lining to form a second lining and whenever they splitting the cells to form uh, another lining from the other this is known as delamination and simply making another layer of tissue using uh, the basement layer that's the idea so these are all these different types of ways of how uh, a cell can fold how a blastoderm can fold to finally make a structure called gastrula now let's look at the example of gastrula and here you see the example of gastrula in sea urchin we'll see the gastrulation process in sea urchin as well as in frog in sea urchin and frog there are little differences 
In sea urchin, if you look at this whole structure, it goes up with this blasto uh, blastoderm, as you see, this is the vegetal pole and the top one is the animal pole. And we know the process of folding will begin from vegetal pole. And we also know sea urchin involved in the process of invagination or proper folding to form a uh, gastrula. So in this case, the cells start folding and going inside. And if you look it clear clearly, you'll also see some red cells. Those are colored red to so to make you visible, make these things visible. That those cells start also differentiating nearby. Those cells will make mesoderm, and the, this ectodermal tissue that is present surrounding of the blastoderm is start folding inside. And you see the third picture. It start to fold and going inside the red cells. Those cells, the mesodermal cells, start dividing as well. Afterwards, you see after a few minutes. This particular structure that is formed from outside that is going to form an uh, archenteron or primitive gut and rest of the blasto blastocele that was present will be constrained because you see the blastocele is very big but as we go on for the gastrulation the blastocele's amount is reduced and the archenteron which is this hole the amount of archenteron is increased this will be even further increased in case of uh, the frog uh, gastrulation we will see sooner we'll what we can see this this yellow colored section that is going to make the endoderm the blue is, is going to make the mesoderm so here you see the process of invagination uh, that starts the process of gastrulation and the migration of this uh, cells migration of this uh, involution the process of involution with which the mesodermal cells start migrating and the ectoderm will form this nervous system and skin. Uh, endodermal system will form the lining of digestive and respiratory system. And archenteron is formed uh, utilizing that pore that is formed at the very beginning and start point of, uh, of the process of invagination. And that pore was known as blastopore. But this blastopore ultimately extends to form archenteron. And you know the mesodermal region which is the, the cells in the red color here forms the bone, liver, muscle and blood vessels. So if you look at in this picture, there are a lot of this folding of cells which plays a vital role in the process of gastrulation. If you look at here in this picture, this is a real picture of uh, taken with the staining that the, the, the invagination started from one of this vegetal pore formation of the blastopore that ultimately extends to form this primitive gut inside. And this is really, really important. So for making this lot of crisps and folds, we know it's very important that these cells have a very tightly regulating job of microtubules and microfilaments or actin filaments. And that's the reality. If you look at the whole process, it goes up with the ectodermal layer. And you see the ectodermal layer, how uh, the arrangement of microfilaments extend the cells, making it stretched and then compressed, then stretch, compressed. And that is required all the way around to create this crisp fold and invagination to complete the process. Now I can show you how these microtubules and microfilaments play this important role because microtubules hold the structure together and helps the cells to become elongated while microfilaments or actin filaments will dictate whether one part of the cell, one pole of the cell is, is very much thinner and another pole is thicker. If you look at this picture it becomes much clearer, right? So see in this case you see the microtubules and microfilaments are randomly organized but when they start making a fold then start making the process of gastrulation you see there is an order in the arrangement of microtubules and microfilaments microtubules are holding a proper structure of nucleus pushing the nucleus to one part of the corner while microfilaments dictates the length in the pole you see for the crisp folding we need all the cells to be folded and make a very thin line in this side of the pole and thick on the other side and the only structure can be achieved by this by placing microfilaments elongated and compressed that's how the whole process can be done the dorsal shorter microfilaments ventral longer microfilaments that's how we can actually achieve the proper folding that's how it's possible now now we'll see the gastrulation in frog and the process begins again with the blastocele and blastocele in the middle blastoderm outside and this is a vegetal pole and animal pole and we all know that the process will begin from vegetal pole and from vegetal pole there are few cells that initiate the migration and folding and those cells are known as bottle cells listed here and the the the, the pore small pore created due to the the extension and rearrangement of the microfilaments 
and microtubules down there in the bottle cells they create a small pore known as the blastopore and this is known as the dorsal leaf because the pore formed in the dorsal side then what it does it start making movement inside so you see here the blastopore form a little bit and they start extending try to compare every single image because in this particular image you see the this this blue colored tissue this is ectodermal tissue the the red colored tissue present here will form mesoderm they'll start migrating and the endoderm will be formed due to the blastopore movement this was the blastocele now notice one thing while you are looking at all these pictures is that blastocele region will be constricted slowly slowly and due to this constriction blastocele will be shorter and shorter and while the blastopore is going to make a extension a longer range of extension and this longer range of blastopore ultimately convert itself into archenteron or primitive gut that will be formed slowly so if you look at here they start movement and similarly the movement is not only by the blastopore but ectoderm is moving in the opposite direction in this clockwise direction and mesoderm is moving in the anti clockwise direction look at it and they'll start the process of this involution remember that's how mesoderm migrates over the layer of ectoderm which we saw in the two slides uh, uh, before so here you can see two two types of pores start arranging why because this pore which was the blastopore start becoming larger and larger making the blastocele smaller and smaller and sooner you see the ectoderm is moving in the clockwise direction mesoderm is moving in the anti clockwise direction and sooner at the end this mesoderm will complete by the process of involution and ectoderm is moving by the process of epiboly through outside surrounding outside and then all the blastopo blastocele region becomes shorter and form a very small opening at the end that is known as the ventral leap of the blastopore while rest of the actual blastopore which is the dorsal leaf becomes really big and that is known as the endodermal tissue that known as the archenteron and inside this place is the primitive gut where all the uh, organs like digestive system respiratory system cardiovascular system all those system will be placed inside that region and rest of the three layers of tissue are well differentiated from the ectoderm they will form all these other tissues of nervous system mesoderm muscle and the endoderm digestive respiratory that's how the whole process concludes and at the end we have this two regions from the ventral leaf and dorsal leaf of the blastopore and at that point there is a little bit yolk left because you know not all the yolks are required at the end so at the end that yolk is kind of fixed known as a yolk plug at the end of ventral leaf of blastopore that's how the process of gastrulation completes so it's all about movement of cell folding of cell movement of ectoderm outside movement of mesoderm inside and endoderm will be formed due to the blastopore making room and ex expanding itself and while compressing blastocele region so that in a sense is a process of gastrulation in frog and sea urchin and i hope you like this video if you like this video please hit the like button share this video with your friends and subscribe to my channel to get more and more videos like that thank you